drawing in on hole one, the note in between is. Okay, on hole one, one bend. On hole two, there's two bends. So I'm starting with a blow there with that E. Then I'm bending two steps down, getting the note in between, and then drawing the straight note on the draw two. Okay, so hole one, one bend. Hole two, two bends. On hole three, three bends. Dead handy, yeah. Now, yeah, quite a difficult hole that one. We'll get back, we'll go back to that, but a lot of people struggle with that, so don't beat up yourselves if, uh, if you don't get any of those straight away. So then we're back to hole four. Now, hole four is, um, hopefully you'll observe there, has the same notes just higher up, C and D, as they do on hole one. So as we've got a on hole one, on hole four, we've got one bend again. Because it's just the same notes, just an octave up. Okay, where's the next bend? Now between E and F, there isn't, there's no, there's an E sharp, there's no, there's no F flat. E and F have no note between them. So therefore, there isn't any bend on hole five. You may have heard some harmonica players, even myself, give it a little a bit of, a, of an effect, a, a sort of wail. That's, that's not a full half step. It's not a full, it's not a full thing. It's a little bit of a quarter. It's a little bit of a, just a little bit of a tonal thing, but it's not a complete note in there, really. Uh, in Western music, anyway, I'll just cover myself a little bit there. Okay, now at the top end, there's, there's between C and B, there's, there's no note either. There's no, there's no bend. But there is, however, a note between G and A. There's the uh, G sharp or A flat. Get the right hole, Paul. So there is an A flat. There is one bend on hole six. The blow bends. Okay, yeah. I shan't, I'm going to go back to those because what I'd like to do is to uh, have, a, have a little uh, sort of talk to you and maybe try for yourselves, especially while you're on mute, <laughs> to, have a go, to have a go at getting a bend. Um, so let me just put you on, uh, on gallery view. Now, who here can actually do a bend? Give me a thumbs up if you can actually do one, achieve one. Yeah? Yeah? Oh, goody good. All oh, right, I'm preaching to the choir already. <laughs> we've got, we've got maybe. Okay, yeah, we've got. Uh, you know, <laughs> come see, come sir. So, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, how do we achieve that bend? What is it? What is it? I'm doing to the inside of my mouth to be able to manipulate those notes, those reeds, to be able to do that. And what are those notes even? What are those reeds even doing? So, I had a little scour of the internet, and no one can come up with the physics. On, on what the notes do to each other. Well, I haven't seen, but if anybody does, please put it in the chat or please uh, talk at the end and tell us uh, your discoveries. But is it is it is it a um, is it a harmonic? Is it you know one of like uh, with an overblow where the uh, blow reed stuns completely dead and the draw reed is going? Is it an interaction between the two notes? Well, I've taken the cover plates off of one of the uh, you know of my harmonica and held the held the reeds and held one individually, and they, it does seem to require both for doing a bend. So it's an interaction of the two reeds. So if I start with my uh, my whole four, that um, D to D flat, that's often a good place to start for a bend. Now, before one gets a bend, what I would advise is that you have an absolutely pure and a beautiful single note so that your air channel is absolutely over your hole and it has good tone. It's always a good help too. So for example, if you're drawing on hole four, for example, and you're getting a kind of uh, woolly-ish sound, like, there's air escaping, adjust your embouchure. So get a nice, a nice little duck face air tight seal over that and get a lovely pure ringing single note is what we're after so that airflow is is lovely and we're and we feel in control of it is the main thing because so we're not trying to manipulate something that you're not totally control in control of otherwise you're just like st steering into the wind you know so uh yeah one pure single note so if you're getting a bit of this a bit of a the double stops the the notes either side of that that particular hole if you're hearing a bit of that Adjust, you know, move around till you get that single note. Getting the single note is the absolute first key to that. So I have my single note. 
I've done all me mucking about off. Can people hear the difference? So this is two notes. Or this is two notes. This is one note. And it's training your ears to recognize one particular note at a time. And uh, that, sounds, that's, that sounds terribly obvious to those of us who have been playing for any length of time. But, you know, when I first started playing, I didn't know I wasn't playing one note at a time, uh, you know, more than one note at a time. I didn't know it sounded, it sounded great to me. You know, I was playing this old man and I was going to go. Because, it's, uh, you know, I've taught the beginners classes using uh, Mr. Richard Taylor's meth method there. We're busking it. And our harmonicas are laid out lovely so that, you know, we can make these wonderful noises and we don't really have to get too much of a, of a single note. But for the bends, I would totally, totally recommend that you have a lovely, clear single note if I said it often enough yet. <laughs> OK, so what's happening? What's happening in here? No, there's some sort of compression as my tongue feels like it's I'm, I'm saying. If I do it without the harmonica, I do that near a microphone. Can everyone hear? It feels like my tongue is, is sort of, it feels like it's arched and it feels like it's sliding across the inside of my mouth. Towards the back of it. And I can really feel, especially when I'm playing the note, I can feel the compression. I can feel the... Now, in Steve Baker's Harp Handbook, he quotes that you make the space on the inside of your mouth smaller. Okay. Now the harmonic is a very, very, you know, visualizing instrument. You know, we can't, if we said, if I was teaching a guitar, I'd say, right, put your finger, no, no, don't, you know, put your finger in that shape, put it on that particular fret, and then use the other two to support it, to push it upwards. And that's how we do a bend, but you can't see the inside of my mouth. And I'm telling you, I did attend a, a workshop at the um, 1993 World Harmonica Championships. I might have mentioned that one that year, can't remember, long time ago. Anyway, <laughs> um, Howard Levy did uh, a workshop and he, uh, there's, a, there's a video, out, uh, it's probably still on VHS somewhere. You know, you look all sort of uh, old enough to remember what VHS is, so that's okay. Um, good, good, um, we're all in together. Uh, so there's a VHS video knocking around of so, like, this doctor at some university had put an endoscopic camera up his nose. <laughs> it was delightful. I didn't eat during the whole workshop, it was fine. So um, stuck an endoscopic camera up his nose and into his uh, throat so you could see. They also put an ultrasound on the outside as well. So you could see a cross section of what his tongue was doing. And his tongue was, was a massive muscle. It really is, I had no idea until I'd seen this, just how big the whole, the whole tongue is. And you know, it's easy once you see those kind of things, once you realize what a big muscle that is, to realize what an effect it can have on the inside of your mouth to make that tone like that. So yeah, it was going and bunching up, bunching up completely when it was doing this. And then the doctor um, who was with him in, in Germany got, um, got this, got this like this big syringe thing. It was a big, big old, big old syringe. And it had a tube coming out of either side. Now I've tried to recreate one and I couldn't do it <laughs> because I'm a harmonica player, not a, uh, not a doctor. So anyway, um, he set it at one, one, he had it, had one of the end of the straws position over the hole and he set the syringe at one point and blew into it and it got a, got a true note squashed it down so the space the chamber in the middle was smaller and it did an overblow he then pulled it back again drawed into it sucked into it it got a single note he then compressed it down it did a bend so there's something it was imitating the inside of the mouth there the size of the inside of the mouth to change to manipulate the airflow. I mean, I've had it, uh, all sorts of explanations over the years. Another one was um, uh, my old harmonica teacher, David Michelson, used to describe that it was maybe it was like a, like a hose pipe that's sort of dribbling water. And, you know, um, if a hose pipe's dribbling, you don't turn the tap up. You know, that's the other misconception with bends is that you need to draw the hell out of it. I mean, you're absolutely using no more air whatsoever. But he, his explanation was that you've got a hose pipe that's dribbling, you stick your thumb over the end, and the little jet's going to stick out. It's the same amount of water coming through, same amount of air coming through, coming through this way, but we're just stifling it into creating that sort of compression to get our bend. So. Okay, so what if we start to get a little bend, or, or it squeals, or it goes silent, or it goes dead? Well, we're in the right direction, to be quite honest, then that, that's happening. If it goes something, let's see if I can, let's see if I can replicate it. No, I can't. <laughs> normally, it, normally it does for me very easily. But um, yeah, it, um, if you get that sort of 
deadness or it starts to sound a bit sort of out of tune or a bit or a bit weird, then you're in the right direction, especially if it goes silent, you're totally in the right direction. But when you start to start, start to hear that go a little bit, you need to make sure that you're hitting the correct note because there's no point doing that sort of, uh, you know, well, I say there's no point. Of course, there's a point to everything and everything has a technique and nothing should be thrown away if you ask me really. You know, if you find a little noise you like the sound of, you know, then uh, then keep it. I, I always like the sort of bend in the corner. And that was a mistake because I, you know, was trying to do bends with that single note. So I was like, but actually that sounds really cool and it? so I'm keeping that. So if you do find a noise that, you know, you like the sound of on the way to your bends or on the way to anything, put it in, put it in your arsenal, keep it. It's all good if you ask me. So um, rambling aside, so what happens, you've got, you've got your bend noise, but you want to you make it a proper note is what I say. So we can use it as an effect. We can use it as a, we can use it as a little effect or we can use it as an actual note. So we can play some tunes with it. So we can actually use it as an actual note to be able to play tunes from the bits of the notes, bits of the scale, that are missing on our C harmonica. So we need it, and we need it to have it in tune. We'd like to have a little D flat there on that whole four, which is uh, showed you from the layout earlier. So we've got a C on the blow, D on the draw, and we want a D flat. So we want, what I use, and this is probably older than most of my children, is uh, this is a chromatic tuner. So a chromatic tuner, there's a tons of apps, and if anyone has any uh, apps that they use or um, websites that they use, you know, I know there's all sorts of online tuners. So what we're after is a chromatic style tuner, and I dare say we could probably down one, load one to our phone and stuff like that. But for, you know, I'm old school. I was talking about VHS videos. Now I'm talking about this. So what this is, it's got a little needle. For, I don't know if anyone can see that, but little needle swings. So if I do. Hopefully it's telling me I'm doing the D. Probably not. Yes, it is. And I want to make turn it to be a D flat. Oh, hello. This gentleman's got one as well. I can see one being raised up to the camera. Oh, yeah. Lovely. Is that your phone or is that an old style? Uh, is that an old style ch chromatic tuner as well? Oh, yes, it is. A, it is a chromatic tuner as well. Fantastic. Yeah, I think mine was 20 quid 20 years ago. So it's probably about 200 pounds now. I don't know. Um, yeah. So use one of those to be able to see because you can see when the meter, when the needle comes down, when that row of lights comes down that your note is true so or you can trust your ears and you know after a amount of training i can hear that that those lovely semitones that they are are a nice bit apart but you know what initially you have to train your ears and uh you know you till it until you're able to trust them a chromatic tuner where you can see the little needle coming down and when it's in pitch, this one, this one, they've got a little green light in the middle, you know, that's quite happy. It'll tell me I've got on the right notes. That's pretty good. So, um, yeah, have a look for an app, have a look for a thing, or just buy an old star chromatic tuner. And, uh, and your relatives will absolutely love it when you spend all day in front of this little object. Going, they won't, they won't leave you or nothing. <laughs> Second wife. Anyway, so, um, yeah, uh, but that's that's sort of uh, the kind of thing to do on uh, to do on every hole, every one of those holes where the bends are. Let me just share that up again. Uh, let me just share my screen where all the bends are. So yeah, the, the great thing to do is to sort of look across this, and uh, uh, I think this is the same layouts that I shared last time. Uh, so they're available on the Harmonica UK website, um, and I dare say Sam will where he posted the video. Put these by the side of them last time as well good man thank you sam uh and yeah so you can see where these are look use this as a reference you know and uh, and look for where your notes are so that when you're practicing your your whole one you can see that that's the d flat you're heading for you can look at your chromatic tuner and you can see that you're hitting the d flat the same with the second one that f sharp the F sharp is tricky. It really is tricky to get it as a as a true note. It's absolutely tricky. You know, I'm just blasting that out there, but 32 years and I still have to practice it. Trust me, <laughs> it's uh, it can sound a little. You know, these notes can sound a little bit. I've heard people say that that sort of A or the A flat on whole three that that second note always sounds cheesy. So I used uh, I used a little tune called um, Twilight Time. Uh, there's a couple of guys been at my uh, workshops before I've used it.
which when I first played it, I mean, it's, it's, it's uh, probably doesn't sound that great now, but when I first played it, it was absolutely horrendous. However, these little exercises, these little, if you can find a tune that even has one bend in it, the blue scale, what am I talking about? What am I talking about? The blue scale has two lovely, lovely bends in it. There's the first one. There's the second one. So what am I doing there? I'm blowing hole six. I'm drawing hole five. Drawing hole four. Bending hole four. Blowing hole four. First bend on hole three, the B flat. And then I'm drawing hole two. So there's only two little bends in there, but they're tricky enough if you haven't done any bends before to be able to get in there. It's also a lovely exercise because the blue scale is so insanely useful. <laughs> you know, there's, uh, there's not a lot you can't, you can't do with that as far as, uh, you know, all my cell is a bit on it. I rarely, rarely go outside of it. So, um, yeah, so what's Trevor posted here? And what you got there, Trevor, for us? Can I unmute you for a second and uh, tell us about yeah. it? That's just a, it's an MRI. It's not Howard Levy. It's okay. um, Dave Barrett. And he's got okay. an MRI, but he's bending there. He's pointing out the tongue and stuff. It's just if anyone wants it, just to have a look. See, I think he's got, a, he said, mentions a paper in it as well that's on his website. But, uh, okay, yeah. It may be useful. Cool, cool. Lovely. Thank you, Trev. Um, anyone have, a, have any links to chromatic tuners that they've used? I said no one was, someone was holding one up. Does anyone have an app or stuff like that? Anyone suggest me? Clear tune is quite a good one on phones. Oh, right, yeah, because uh, John was that one on John Cook uh, pointed me to one a while back um, on a website that he was using, which is dead handy as well. So, yeah, they're right. I'm dare say a quick Google of chromatic tuner would be, um, be no problem as well. But I think they're they're pretty, uh, uh, pretty thing. Anyone have uh, I'm gonna open the floor up for a little while now. Anyone have any questions whatsoever, whatsoever about, about anything to do with what I've spoken about so far? I do talk incredibly quickly. And I do have an outrageous Suffolk accent. So uh, <laughs> please, anybody, any tuners. Guitar tuner has chromatic tuner. Yes, it does. I've used that app for tuning my guitar. Yeah, wonderful. Cool. Um, yeah. Bend exercises. Anything that involves a little bend. I was teaching, I did a little, um, a little jelly roll uh, that I was teaching on the um, sidal site. And that only uses that D flat, that whole four bend that we were ta talking about. But this one starts on bend. So we start on the bend on all four. Draw a straight in on all four. Draw hole five. Draw hole four. Bend hole four. Draw hole three. So again, that's bend on all four. Draw a hole four, draw a hole five, draw a hole four, bend hole four, draw a hole three. And that's, um, that can get real fast. If you build do that nice and slowly, make sure that those bends are lovely and smooth. And then I do a sort of little slide up on that first one. If you want to take it to the next stage. But you can also do that on the whole six as well. So it's a lovely thing. There's a whole bit on one of the Jean-Jacques Milteau albums, if you haven't heard of Jean-Jacques Milteau. Amazing. Incredible French harmonica player. Where he just does that for the whole 12 bars round while the band's kicking it around beyond. And then he does this run that I'll live to be a hundred years old. I'll never get it. Do you know what I mean? But um, yeah, that's a, that's a lovely little trick and a lovely little, little exercise to get your bends in. Oh, you know, like, so I always um, try to pick a tune that twilight time was, is particularly tricky, you know, especially as this is a beginner's bends class, but um, I'll quite happily tab that out for anybody if they want to, uh, if they have an interest in it, contact me afterwards. Um, I've sort of rambled right quick through uh, talking about the oh. bends and stuff like that. Yes, mate. Yeah, me, sorry. Sorry? Honest old Tony, mate. Tony, yeah. Oh, hello, Tony. Sorry, mate. How cool. <laughs> it's on screen too. How are you, buddy? Not so bad. I hope your bends are in order, as the, uh, you showed me yeah, how yeah, to yeah. do it in the first place. 
<laughs> I mean, I think I'd just say, uh, make it clear that you, you're poker playing, aren't you, all the way through that, all, all the way through that. Yeah. Yes, yes, I am. I am a predominantly poker player. Um, you know, you mean like lip pursing, not that I'm yeah, yeah, lip pursing, like, you yeah. know, uh, what you call Jamie Oliver means good or whatever it is, I don't know. Because I think some of the chromatic players in this group are probably more used to tongue blocking together, you know, a lot of, a lot of chromatic uh, Okay. So, um, yeah, big discussion, big can of worms. Tony's just opened there. Thanks, Tony. <laughs> Tongue blocking versus pucker. I double dare anyone to say that on a, on a Facebook forum. Um, uh, or to say one or the other is better. I absolutely double dare you because um, it will start off with a discussion that goes on for years. Um, it, like I said earlier, every technique is good. Every technique is good. Every, you know, um, both. I, I do both. I can't, act, I have tried and, um, on many occasions to bend whilst tongue blocking. So what do I mean while bending while tongue blocking? Well, I was going to do tongue blocking as my next workshop, but unfortunately I'm having my broadband switched off. But tongue blocking, for those that don't know, for the uninitiated, is a way of using your tongue to block off notes in the harmonica to play other notes. In its purest form, it's used as a way to get a single note. So when we were talking about single notes earlier, what I would do, for example, I would take those four holes into my mouth and block off three of them. So I'm just playing the whole four there. To bend like that, like I just did, I've honestly not tried many times before. I find it particularly difficult. It is apparently the the more difficult path to bending, but apparently I wouldn't know because I can't do it. It's the more, more rewarding as well. I think uh, the likes of Joe Felisco and Dennis Grunling, who are, who are of course insanely good harmonica players, um, are proof of the pudding of that. Um, myself, I, I'm not sure I'll live long enough. <laughs> but um, I, I'm an embouchure switcher. So what that means is, so we use uh, the term I'm sure to describe how a mouth touches the harmonica, so um, the shape it makes. So I'll switch between tongue blocking and signal notes. So I'll go. So it's all tongue blocking, which I'm taking my tongue on off. And then I'll switch to pucker to play my single notes at the end. So which is probably making more work for myself than if I'd have just tongue blocked the whole thing. Um, but you know, it's a, it's a habit, it's a habit of forms. Perhaps one day I'll, I'll tackle those pesky, um, those pesky sort of uh, tongue block bends. Uh, there is also the, uh, the U blockers. So we have our tongue blockers that block, you know, three holes off and play one out the side. We're also our U blockers. If I could just discuss to you all with the inside of my mouth for a moment, but it's a harmonica lesson. What else did you expect? Uh, people do this and then use the middle of that roll there to get a single note. Again, not tried that much. So uh, yeah, that sounds great. So I might go and practice something else that I've got to tag on to the next 32 years, I guess, of my practicing. Um, but some, for some people, it's absolutely, my friend Charles King, absolutely insanely fantastic blues harmonica player, plays plays U blocking the whole, the whole time. And his tone is absolutely monster. And if you look at his neck and Mark Hummel is the other one, I, I, I think he's a U blocker, but he's a big tongue blocker as well. But you can just see his neck because his tongue is permanently forward is absolutely huge. Um, that apparently is uh, sort of, I haven't watched a, a Joe Felisco workshop at one time many, many moons ago, is the sort of benefit of it that is supposed to improve your tone. Um, yeah, judge for yourself. Have a go at everything. Okay, if tongue blocking, do you still use the tongue? Well, yeah, that's it. this is it. Which part of the tongue then goes back? Because I'm so used to thinking as Barry and Irene just replying to you guys there. Um, yeah, because obviously I was thinking the tongue slides back, but which bit of it has got to stay forward? So yeah, I'm conflicted. So I'm going, I'm going for that hole four as a tongue block. So it feels like the back bit is still doing some moving there. So the front bit's staying at the, at the front of the heart, but the back bit's doing some moving. Oh, Alan, let's have a look what you are. My burning question about tongue blocking would be, I get it when you're playing a blown note, but struggle with what you do in the tongue on a draw. Right, so again, this actually applies to bends. So I skirted over the blow bends. So blow bends have a time. So there's two bends in hole 10, one in hole nine, and one in hole eight on the blow. So why I bring them up is when you do a draw bend, when you do a draw bend, call it. Stick to one bit. You can you can feel your tongue going backwards with the airflow, and the same when you're when you're tongue blocking, when you're blowing, when you're blowing. I, I, you know, I was, I'm just sort of you know theorising here. When you're blowing, 
your tongue's forward and relax. When you want to go backwards, when you breathe in, I guess it takes its, does it take its tongue, do your tongue with you? Let's have a try. It does, I am resisting the urge, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I guess what's happening there, uh, Alan, is maybe your uh, tongue's wanting to go in the direction that the air's going. I would sort of think about that, visualize, and uh, push that forward. Um, Bobby says, uh, PT Gazelle's a pucker player and he's not too shabby. No, he isn't. <laughs> yeah, he's pretty amazing. No, it's it's horses for courses is what it is. I think it is totally just a choice. And one of the, one of the many things that, you know, many things that attracted me to the harmonica in the first place and why I have such a lifelong passion for it is that I haven't found any technique that, you know, I've just gone, no, that's not how you do it. I, I, re I really can't. Just add it to your arsenal. You'll find something to do with it one day. You know, I used to collect sort of techniques, which is why I, I got heavy, heavily into the overblows at such a young age. When I was about 17, I think I first sort of started overblowing properly. And um, was that it was just another technique to add to the arsenal. It's like, yeah, I want that. I might never use it. I might not. And you know, it took me years before I thought, well, actually, Paul, that, that overblow on whole six is in your, is in your, is in your blue scale. <laughs> you fool. I could do it for years, wasn't, wasn't using it properly. So uh, yeah, add it to your arsenal. You never know when it's gonna, when it's gonna be useful is what I say. Um, I've got about 10 sort of uh, 15 minutes uh, almost finishing at four. So I'll gladly just open up to, uh, again, to any questions anybody anybody has whatsoever. I, have I answered the questions down in the chat to everybody's satisfaction so far? Anybody at all, anything whatsoever? Shall I tell you about my new album? How about that? <laughs> I want to ask a question. Yes, miss. Oh, um, could you show me the difference between a, 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 a draw, hang on, I've got to look at my sheet of paper here. A draw bend and mm. an overdraw. An overdraw, okay. Um, an overdraw so, uh, are part of the overblow family. So if I get my little, uh, if I get my little, da, 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 where do I share? And what do you have to do in your mouth to get Ooh, that? To get an overdraw? Well, I still struggle myself, to be fair. So <laughs> if I just quickly uh, share up where my, my layout here. So we've got the uh, we've got the uh, bends. So we've got our, our bends down the bottom there, fill it, filling in the gaps. But to fill in the absolute rest of the gaps, we're going to need our overblows and overdraws. So I, I, if I were you, I would probably, if you can't do them already, or perhaps you can. That's why you're asking about overdraws. Is would okay. um, focus on your overblows. So your overblows are the missing notes yeah. to make your harmonica fully chromatic. So here's all our bends and overblows all together. So yeah, the red I've, ones. I've are got overblows. this diagram. Yes. Yeah. So how do you achieve an overdraw? Right. Well, um, okay. The first thing that I would do, because it's helped me, is uh, I had to fiddle about with my harmonica a little bit to help me achieve the overdraws. So on an overdraw, it's the uh, it's the draw read that stuns that stuns dead, and it's a blow read that sounds. So I've just. Um, yeah, couldn't tell you by how much. It was tri literally trial and error. So I pushed it, I took the cover plates off, pushed it a little bit. I hope my connection is unstable. Can you still hear me? Yeah, oh, good, good. Um, yeah, so what am I doing? I'm sort of a. That overdraw, yeah. And as you can hear, I'm no expert on those. But yeah, the overblow is fine. It's almost like the opposite of a bend. So if I do a blow bend, for example. I can feel it. I can feel that that compression in my mouth. I mean, this is how I describe to do an over overblow. Is uh, if I was to do a draw bend on hole four, and then blow over the same mouth shape or the same sort of tongue shape in the in the inside here, then that's what causes my overblow, as far as I can visualise and I can hear. So I would imagine. So for example, it's just resisting when you do blow that your tongue wants to flop foot wants to go forward same with the overdraw yeah it's kind of a it's, it's right up there it's, it's very it's very tense <laughs> i can't okay. be any more help than that i'm afraid okay thank you <laughs> no problem at all okay <laughs> it's good fun <laughs> i dare say they're not great fun to listen to practice in <laughs> I'll lock myself away. Anybody else? Anything at all? What harp am I playing? Okay, that is a, it is a sale session steel. I have I have tweaked it for uh, for the um, uh, f to make the overblows up. Uh, on those uh, on the blow bends on the blow sorry the blow notes. 
I have taken apart, put the draw reeds closer, slightly closer to help that. But yeah, it's uh, it's a session steel. Um, oh, it's the summer edition. That's why it's got the funky cone stuff like that. Yes. Anybody else? Anything to ask? Yeah, I've, Anything I've, it's just a, a, a point to make, Paul, about the um, yes, the fact that your mouth shape will change um, f for different key harmonicas. So you you think mm. you think you've sorted, let's say. Whole, oh, your mouth shape. Yeah, yeah, your mouth shape changes every hole, as far as I'm concerned. So, so if you have a lower harmonic, yeah. you have a lower harmonic, tone. you've got to mm. create a bigger chamber, haven't you? Okay. Absolutely, yeah. That's, that's more of a tone issue, to be quite honest, more than anything else. Um, for me, that inside of the mouth changes every, every hole. With, uh, of course, the air pressure mm. has to change as well, because the higher the note, the smaller the root. And like you say, to accommodate on those um, low harps. So where's my, uh, where's my low G? So this is my low G. <laughs> in order to get that nice sort of big rich sound in order to get the reeds to respond as well because those low reeds if you attack them too quickly will freeze up on you they'll they'll they'll, they'll just stop and then just start when they want to so you know you have to change your attack as well so not only you have to change the inside of your mouth shape if you ask me for every note you have to change your air pressure your attack and your uh, decay on that as well so attack is how you go at the note so <laughs> see there for example it started after I started blowing. I could there, so you probably couldn't tell that unless I was playing in a musical context, then I'd be half a beat late. <laughs> but yes, Sam, I totally agree with you, mate. Anybody else? Anything? Paul. To <coughs> Paul. Yes, who's that? I was just thinking uh, for the guys that haven't started to bend yet, mm -hmm. is there a, a mouth articulation that they can practice to help, to help it along? Good idea. Like, yes. Like e e or whatever. Yeah, EU, EU, um, mulching an oyster was another one I've heard. I've never had an oyster, but a very posh person told me that. Um, EU, EU, EU. Yeah, is there anything, that make, is there anything that makes the tongue slide back there, any sort, any sort of, uh, you know, articulation that does. Yeah, EU is a good one. Thank you, Russ. Awesome. Hello, Paul. Hello. Paul. All right, Paul. Who's, who's talking? Is that Tony again? Yeah. Hello, buddy. Yeah, I mean, there's one articulation um, I've heard said, and it, it does work. Because if um, if you whistle from a low note to a high note, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Yeah. So if you whistle, like, if you whistle on the inbit, or if you oh, draw yeah. a note oh, whistle, yeah. then your tongue does the same. It's okay. beyond the teeth and sinks down into the bottom of the mouth. Kind of like a swanny whistle kind of noise, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but if you, if it starts on a high note, in happening. And your, your mouth goes in the same sort of shape as you do. Yeah. I like that, Tony. Thank you very much. You yeah, see, I like that one. Yeah. Uh, that, yeah, your mouth starts behind the teeth and then sinks down into the into the bottom. Yeah, I'm going to use that one. Thank you, Tony. That's cool. It's like it's like it, whistling, inhaling, starting on the high note, going down to the low. Mm -hmm. it, Great. Cool. It, your tongue sort of simulates the shape of when you're bending. Yes. Yes, it does. Awesome. Can I make a suggestion about an overblow, please? Yes, please do. Um, if you sing the Tears of a Clown, Smokey Robinson, the B flat is the note. Um, da, 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 you know that the riff and that tune. Yeah. You know cool. the you know the riff I'm talking about. I do indeed. Yeah, lovely. Yeah. Well, that's the old blow. It's a B flat. If you want to try and get it, you know, it's an easy way of trying to pursue it with your mouth. Yeah great stuff yeah no always good to have tunes to exercise these things with you know yeah, that, 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 that'll bring it together to get the note uh, i think anyway you know. mm. thank you lovely thank you mate cheers just another thought paul do you want to say anything about the um the bends on hole three because you've got three of them and oh yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah they're good and let me just share that let me just share my little diagram again then so yeah we've got the b which is our straight note the b flat the a and the a flat so uh yeah the a and the a flat contentious issue do they sound like real notes can you make them sound like real notes i will i will make it my life's work to try and make to make them happen now they're actually although it sounds like it should be like you know when you first sort of move around the harmonica and you think oh the difference between hole four and five you misjudge because you're trying to move too far because you think oh that's a big leap i feel the same is going on in that bend that there that it's a really subtle mouth change but i'm articulating those with a with a 
with a, with a little with a little tick of the tongue. Now. And the trick with that is to first of all get it all as one big one big um, uh, glissando. And then divide it up into notes with our chromatic tuner. So because the idea is that we want to hit those as separate notes within themselves. Um Dave Michelson, my old teacher, wrote a uh, uh, wrote a piece for me to practice those with, which is why I'm I'm, I'm all right at them at the minute. It's uh, so that it's called Crown of Thorns Tango. And it goes. So what that's doing is that's going. So starting on that A, that middle bend, going up to the B flat, going back to the A, going to the A flat, and then finishing on the A. <laughs> so yeah, find another exercise, find a tune in there. That, like I said, at twilight time, I'll supply the tab for that one because that was quite a good one to get your whole three bends in there. So yeah, that's quite, that's quite handy. But yeah, they are tricky. They are, they are tough. That particular hole is tough. Um, use chromatic tuner, keep practicing. There's absolutely no substitute for, uh, for practice. And uh, as they always say, a few minutes a day is better than an hour a week. So yeah, thank you very much for listening, everybody. I'm gonna have to bugger off in a minute. We really appreciate your time. Thanks, I hope you enjoy Will Wild later on. Anybody else before I nick off? Just, just to, um, uh, sorry, me again, Paul. Um, I sat in on uh, one of Ben Bauman's uh, Facebook Live workshops. He does them on Wednesday, um, I think it's seven o'clock hour time. And he, he showed something that I'd never thought of before. On, on the whole two draw, you've got, um, so you've got t two bends on, you know, a double bend and a, and a single bend on there. And what he was doing was actually turning that into three notes. So it's a, a so he was throwing in not proper notes, but it still okay. sounds okay. Do you, do you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you'd be, you know, it should be. And it, it was, yeah. it, it was just something that you know, it's every now and then you pick up something different, don't you? That's that was really quite. I found it really quite interesting thinking, oh, never thought of that before. I didn't think it was allowed. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not sure I'd like that for my playing, but um, <laughs> I, used, <laughs> I used those sort of, uh, they sort of quarter notes as an effect, like I say, you know, with a, and obviously going up to the, you know, on the way to other things as well, they're great for that. But um, yeah, don't, don't throw it away, but it isn't technically an actual note that we would use is, is to what is what the main things to remember. Use it as an effect, not as an actual note, because it isn't one. Uh, just, I, I've just, I don't, I don't, are, you, are you able to stay until your Wi-Fi goes off, are you? Yes, mate. I'll dare say I'll just go, I'll just be like uh, frozen and it'll go. Go on. <laughs> uh, yeah, another, another thing is actually um, when you, when you first start doing bends, you tend to start with the, with the unbent note. Is there anything you uh -huh. can say about um, when you're playing um, and getting that bend straight away? Visualize, visualize yeah. it. Muscle memory, visualization. Yeah. So I use the uh, yeah straight note as a, as a point of reference most of the time, so that I can uh, when you know teaching yourself the intonation, intonation being the difference between uh, the space between two notes, how far apart they are. Um, so I use it as a point of reference. But yeah, my, then the muscle memory kicks in, so that you can go straight to the straight to the bent note. So then you can go to it. So it's only going to build up muscle memory through practice. You're only going to build that up if you if you visualize it. So when you go straight for the night, you visualize, right, I want that whole four bend. I want it straight off. I remember what the mouth shape goes like. <laughs> Lovely. And that's something that only takes doing it over and mm -hmm. over and over and over again. There is absolutely no substitute for that. Yeah. Is, <laughs> but yeah is that, I know memory. it's a difficult one, but yeah. is, it, is, it, is there any harmonica... Um, that would bend easier than others, and I know it's commercial and everything, but no, not at all. It's not commercial at all. You know, um, I, I my sort of rule of thumb is that if it's um, a well-made, 
well priced time when I come in this country in this country as far as things you get you generally get the quality that you pay for most of the time. Right. <laughs> so it has to be an airtight harmonica. It has to be a nice well if you're paying if you're paying under thirty pounds for a harmonica, it's probably gonna be a, a fairly, you know, beginners and it it will bend, it'll be hard work. More than thirty pounds you're talking, you know, thirty, forty, fifty pounds, you're talking about your sale sessions, sale session seals. Your um, Lee Oscars are great and airtight for bends. Anything above th between thirty and sixty pounds is going to be a great airtight harmonica, and we'll we'll right. see you out. I, I hardly ever spend more than that on my harps, to be yeah. honest. Anything okay. higher than that, I'd say, is professional instrument. You can tell because they don't put numbers on them. Do we need them? We can't see them anywhere when it's on If I find them condescending, to be fair, it's taking them, it's mugging me off. So um, <laughs> yeah, as, as long as it feels airtight, as long as you you know. Within that, I would say, as a rule of thumb, has anyone else got anything to interject to that? As a rule of thumb, you're paying between 30 and 60 quid for a harmonica. It's going to be fair. Okay. Think, and it's, going yeah. to be, it's going to help you, you know. But when, but when, you, do, when you do pay over your, I mean, that's uh, um, uh, 1847. And ooh. It, ooh. Yeah, I know. Well, he's got more money than sense, isn't he? It's all the TV appearances. <laughs> <laughs> but you notice the difference with these say compared to a lee oscar in terms of the amount of air that um that's passing through the harmonica so i think as mm. you say the more you, you pay then the easier it is to control that um absolutely to, to control the bend um just going back to that bend three one little exercise i i found useful is is um it's almost i can't remember what scale it's called it's it's sort of like that um almost like an eastern european or eastern scale that sort of and what have, what i find good, of, what i find good with that is you're learning control have you heard of roland van Straten? um i'm not sure if i have actually does all that stuff look him up <laughs> a million times better than that but yeah i saw him do that stuff but you're right that is a that is lovely but that, i think that's relying on that bottom bend there isn't it that right down that a flat yeah, so, yeah that's those that's sort of harmonic minor scales yes yeah no it's, it is i i just find that that really good to to, to that just to be able to jump between the the full uh, three bends and just to the to, to the unbent note. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's um, it's just it's just a little tip, you know, that uh, people yeah. might find useful. Um, Guys, my doors are knocking. I'm going to have to go. And, uh, thanks ever so much for listening, everybody. Um, yeah, my album's out. If you ever know wants one, contact me. I'll be on uh, paulglingsharmonica.com. <laughs> Find me on Facebook. Kev's got one. Cracking. Thanks ever so much for having me. Thank you all for listening. Yeah, thank you. All right, cheers. All right. Cheers.